to entitle Beautiful One. Wherever you may be, your home, at work, wherever you're watching, I want you to just lift one of your hands right here. No other God can be called a Father. No other God can be called a friend. No other God can be called Redeemer. No other God's coming back again. You're the beautiful one. We love your name, oh yes. And how we love your name, Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful one. We love your name, no other God. Yeah. No other God. Sing with us. Of 
the beautiful, beautiful one. You're the beautiful, beautiful one. You're the beautiful, beautiful. Everybody say, you're the beautiful, beautiful one. On, lift up those holy hands and repeat after me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord where our feet shall dwell within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise right there. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on this day. Please share this message. Call someone, text someone, let them know that we are on and we're ready to give God honor and praise on this day. You are a miracle and I am so thankful that you have decided to join us on this day. Come and go with me now as we will look into the book of Romans, the fifth chapter, the third verse, and it merely reads these words. Paul says, we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope, and hope does not put us to shame. I want to talk today uh, from this subject as we continue our series about messages from Mars. I want to talk about perseverance with power. I want to talk about perseverance with power. As you know, uh, we're continuing our series and we are dealing with the names of the rovers that are in Mars. And those names like spirit and ingenuity and opportunity and, and many other names. But today I want to deal with the name of perseverance. And I ask that you go back and look at those other messages as they give inspiration to you. Perseverance with power. If there is any attribute that we should pray for and ask God to bless us with and endow us with, it is the power and the ability to persevere. Perseverance, my brothers and sisters, is the determination to do something despite facing uh, obstacle and difficulty uh, that is before you. I want you to know that this became the reality for many that are living in the Asian communities today. Because just this past week, 
we saw attacks that came against those who are among the Asian community. And I want you to know that I do not condone or support any form of racism, acts of violence, or, or any form of supremacy against any race, uh, especially that of the Asian community or my own community. And I want you to know that we all know that this hate crime and these hate crimes were inspired by 45 while he was in office. But I would hope that the Asian community would quickly identify themselves with the African American community and realize that what they are now going through, we have also grown through ourselves. I wish I can tell you the number of black people, including myself, who have been profiled in many Asian-owned establishments. We have been followed throughout stores owned by Asians. I went in the store some time ago, and don't you know, I was followed throughout that store as if I was suspected of stealing something out of that store. And that little lady was following me so closely, I stopped and she bumped into me. And I was offended, so I ended up leaving that store. I want you to know, I wish I could tell you the number of our sisters who have been mistreated treated while trying to buy weave or getting their nails done, not to mention the attitudes that we've had to face for just ordering some extra soy sauce for our rice while eating a meal in their restaurants. Of course, not all Asians or Asian establishments have responded in this way. But if many of us would use this moment uh, to help them to understand this truth, that white supremacy hates them like they hate us, we all are in this thing together. So to our Asian brothers and sisters, you must persevere. You must stand strong because you are a beautiful people. You don't deserve this. You don't deserve to die for just trying to live. But, but understand that we don't either. I wish I had some help in here. We don't deserve to be profiled. We don't deserve to be looked at funny. We don't deserve to be stalked for just coming in your restaurants and coming in your stores. You don't deserve it, and we don't either. But it's time for us to persevere together. I want you to know that that's what Martin uh, Nemola was talking about when they said, when he said, first they came for the communists. And I did not speak out because I was not a communist. They came for the socialists. And I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. They came for the trade unionists. I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. And then they came for the Jew. But I did not speak out because I was not Jewish. And then they came for me. And there was no one left to speak out for me. What I'm trying to tell you is that we're all in this together. Would you please put in the chat box somewhere and tell some somebody that we got to look out for each other. Uh, don't you know that, that when they come for you, you got to speak up for me. And when they come for me, I got to speak up for you because we're all in this together. It's time for us to persevere. Kirk Franklin needs to hear this word today because Kirk Franklin uh, faced his own moment of attack this week. Don't you know he was attacked for being called on tape in a dispute with his son. I wish I would have had an opportunity uh, to give him some encouragement because I wish I would have put any rebuke of my father on tape somewhere. I wish I had some help in here. Uh, don't you know that I am a preacher's son and, and don't you know my father was saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. But there were times when I did some foolish stuff in my own life and I wish I would have put my father's rebuke on tape somewhere. And don't you know 
that, that I, if I had done that, I wouldn't be preaching to you right now. I wish I had some help in here. But don't you know that black fatherhood is not easy. And sonship pain must be processed over time and with prayer. Don't you know that in our community, trauma is a reality. And there is trauma on both sides. So don't you know that attack came for Kirk Franklin because some Christians uh, who cursed themselves claim that they ain't buying his music no more. That they don't want to hear him preach no more. That they don't want to see him perform anymore. And they're now turning their back on him and turning his music off uh, because they heard words he had to say. But the truth of the matter is, is that if you live this life long enough whether you're a Christian or not all of us have a boiling point I wish I had some help in here all of us reach that place where we can get to that edge where we 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 reach that boiling point where we may say some things and do some things and then go to God and ask God for forgiveness now if you are all perfect and if you got yourself together and if you don't need any grace in your life then and Lord bless you real good but I ain't there yet and I am one that needs grace to cover me. Do I have about 50 in here right now that would know that I'm so glad that grace keeps on covering me. Would you please put in the chat box that I am somebody that needs grace to cover my life. Is there anybody in here right now that knows that the only reason you're alive is that you got grace on your side? The only reason you're alive is that grace woke you up this morning and grace started you on your way would you please tell somebody I'm so glad that the Lord still gave me grace and favor and he looked past all my faults and saw my every need somebody ought to shout glory right now I'm telling y'all perseverance is what we need perseverance is this y'all understand that we need perseverance because when obstacles arise you might share change your direction to reach your goal but you you don't necessarily change your decision to get there uh-huh perseverance says that if you're going through hell uh, to key to survival is that you got to keep on going I wish I had some help in here you can't stop in the middle of your hell you got to keep on going I don't know who I'm talking to but some of y'all are going through hell on your job you're going through hell in your home. You're going through hell in your finances. You're going through hell in your relationship. But the word says don't stop right there. Uh, you got to keep on going. Anybody in here determined this morning that I'm going to keep on going? Perseverance says that in the words of, of, of Dr. King and John Mendez that if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, keep on moving. Do I have a witness in here. Well, don't you know we got to have perseverance if we're going to maximize our limits, if we're going to obtain our goals, if we're going to move to the place where God wants us to be, we've got to have perseverance. That's what Paul says right here in Romans 5 verse 3. Paul says we got to learn how to glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope and hope does not make us ashamed. Now if anybody knows anything about suffering, uh -huh, Paul knows what it means to suffer. Can I tell you church that you are not much of a saint until you learn how to suffer suffer. Don't you know that Paul learned how to suffer? He was beaten with rods. Don't you know he was pelted with stones? He, he learned how to suffer. It was Paul, though he was saved and though he had a relationship with God, he was imprisoned all for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was a tent maker from Tarsus. He was the converted murderer of the saints, but yet he had to learn how to suffer. 
supper. It was Paul who was in prison because it was Paul who went down to Philippi one day, you remember, with that, um, with his uh, uh, co-laborer by the name of Silas. And it was that when they got down to Philippi, there was a little girl who had the spirit of divination on her. And it was Paul and Silas who realized that she was captured with the spirit of witchcraft, that they would remove that spirit from her. And the Bible declares that the people of the day are uh -huh, those money changers, those who were using her for their own wealth became angry and put Paul and Silas in an innermost prison. And the Bible declared that while Paul and Silas were there, they put them in shackles and in chains. But watch their perseverance. The Bible says that while they were there in shackles and chains, that the Bible says right around midnight, I wish I had some help, that Paul and Silas began to pray and sing songs. Can I tell you that there comes a time when your perseverance has to be connected with the order of your worship. If you're going to persevere through some hard times, through your shackles and through your chains, you got to have worship as an agenda uh -huh, as you go through your time of shackles and chains. I want you to know that it's something about worship, our connection with God that helps us to persevere through our times of difficulty and our times of obstacles and our times of opposition. I want you to know that Paul and Silas began to pray and sing songs. I, I don't know what prayer they prayed. I, I don't know what kind of prayer they prayed. I don't know whether it was a prayer of thanksgiving. I don't know whether it was a prayer of supplication. I don't know what kind of prayer they prayed, but they prayed and they sang songs. I wish I was there to hear the song they sang. Maybe they sang a piece of that 23rd Psalm where it said, Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, for I fear no evil, for thou art with me. I feel like preaching in here today. For thou art with me, thou art, and thy staff comfort me. Maybe they sang a piece of that uh, 91st Psalm where it said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For I say unto the Lord that he is my strength and my fortress. The mighty God in him will I trust. I don't know what they sang. Maybe they sang a piece of that song where it said, I bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I don't know what they prayed in this song, but when they prayed and when they sung, the Bible says that the earth began to shake and the shackles came off their hands and the shackles came off their feet and Paul and Silas were set free. Can I tell somebody that when you persevere and when you pray and when you sing and when you worship deliverance will show up. Is there anybody in here right now that knows that God will deliver when you persevere? When you put in the chat box, when you tell somebody that that's my testimony when I started worshiping when I started praying, when I started singing, when I lifted up my eyes to God, that's when the Lord blessed me. When I turned it over to him, that's when God blessed me. I want you to know, Paul learned how to suffer. He suffered y'all when they beat him 39 times. I want you to know, they beat Paul 39 times, five times. Don't you know that it was a part of the culture to beat him 39 times, just one short of 40. They beat him 39 times. You remember when Paul went down to Lystra and there was a man that was lame and it was Paul who was beat 39 times and it was Paul when he delivered and set that man free that they drug Paul outside of the city and beat him 39 times and don't you know the word says that they left Paul outside the city half dead 
Don't you know you will miss the, the critical part of this message because the word says they left him half dead. That's a word that you need to undermark and underline because if Paul was half dead, that means that he was still half alive. Don't you know it all depends on how you look at it because if I'm half dead, that means I'm still half alive. Don't focus so much on the dead. Focus more on the alive. Because church, if you still are half alive, that means that you still have life in you. Can I tell you, some of y'all are still alive. You might be going through some stuff, but the word says as long as you got life on the inside of you, you still got a chance. I know that things may not look like you want them to look. You might be hanging on by a hair nail. You might be hanging on. You might not have all that you used to have, but if you still got life on the inside of you, you still got a chance. Anybody here thank God that you may not have all that you used to have, but you still got life. And the word says that he has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If I can still breathe, if I still got blood in my body, if I can still have a pulse, if I can still have, must I preach in the house, if I still got oxygen in my blood, if I still got a heartbeat, then I still got a chance. Would you please call somebody that may be dealing with something and tell him if you still got life on the inside, then God still has a chance. I wish I was preaching to somebody right now that's about to give up, that looks like they're about to throw in the tower, but God says that if you still got life on the inside, then you still got a chance. Don't you know that Paul crawls back into the city, and don't you know he confronts those who left him outside of the city half dead and I want y'all to know that the reason that Paul crawls back into the city he lets them know that y'all don't determine where I shall die sometimes the reason that God keeps your enemies alive is because he wants your enemies to realize that they don't determine where your end shall be some of y'all need to stop praying that God will wipe your enemies out no, 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 no. That's not my prayer. I want God to keep my enemies alive because when God brings me through this, my enemies got to realize that couldn't nobody but God do this. Sometimes you want your enemies to stay around for them to see that God kept you alive. Do I have a witness in here? So it was Paul, y'all, who had to learn how to suffer. Paul suffered. He suffered a shipwreck. He suffered pelted stones. He suffered beatings. He suffered being spit on. So then Paul, he suffered. But then, y'all, he suffered with a purpose because the Bible says that suffering produce perseverance. Don't you know that perseverance means that you are determined. Yes, Lord, you are determined. You have to be determined that if you're going to survive, you got to be determined. If you're going to see your vision come to pass, you got to be determined. We are a church determined to live for Christ. I, I wish you would repeat that after me. We are a people that are determined to live for Christ. Uh, I want you to know that if you are going to maximize your purpose you got to be determined to live for Christ you got to be determined my question is what are you determined for what are you determined to do uh -huh. what are you determined to be uh, what are you determined to overcome I'm gonna ask you again what are you determined to do uh, are you determined that you gonna walk again I, I don't know who I'm I'm speaking to right now but somebody uh -huh, has given up on trying to walk again. I, I see you right now. You, you, you have given up trying to put one foot in front of the other foot. But, but God says if you trust me and if you put your trust in me, I'll help you to walk again. But, but I need you to be determined. Are you determined to walk again? Uh, somebody lost their appetite. Uh -huh. But God says, are you determined to eat again? Uh -huh. Somebody wants to commit suicide. Uh -huh. But don't you kill yourself. Uh -huh. God says that I need you to be determined to live again. Are you determined to work again? Uh, what are you determined to do? 
do. Uh -huh. But then the question is, what are you determined to be? Uh -huh. Because church, uh, you got to be determined to be something. Uh, do you want to be healed? Uh -huh. Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be delivered? You got to want to be better than you are. Uh -huh. Douglas Mallock said that it can't be a tree on top of a hill. Uh, be a bush in the deep green valley, but be the best bush. If you can't be a highway, be the trail. Uh, if you can't be the sun, uh, be a star. It's not by the size uh, whether you win or fail, uh, but that should be the best at whatever you are. Uh, what are you determined to be? Are you determined to be the lawyer that you want to be? Are you determined to be an accountant? Are you determined to be a college graduate? Are you determined to be the best business person? Are you determined to be the best secretary? You got to want to be what you need to be. I can't make you be what you need to be. But you got to want to be something. Do I have a witness in here? Uh -huh. Are you determined uh -huh, to overcome? You see the reason that some of us don't persevere because we don't want to overcome. I found out uh, that some people love uh, being victims because they get attention being victims. Do I have a witness in here? But I want y'all to know, church, that you got to desire and you got to want and you must be determined to overcome uh -huh, and desire to be an overcomer and get through what you're going through. Do I have a witness in here? I want y'all to know that Bishop James Woodson, he called me and he said, Mac, he said, I got a word for you. He said, the reason that your mother is still getting through what she's going through. He said, because your mother has a mindset that even in her sickness, she really don't believe that she is sick. Do I have a witness in here? And he said, that's why the Lord keeps on blessing her because in her mind, she's still healthy. She's still whole. She's still delivered. She's still a miracle before God. And I'm trying to tell you, church, that you got to see yourself being somewhere that you presently are not. And I wish I had somebody that would put in the chat box or text somebody else that you know going through and tell that person, say, neighbor, God just put it on my heart to tell you to hold on that God is about to bring you out because you are an overcomer. You are not a drug addict. You are not a prostitute. You are not defeated. But you are an overcomer. You are an achiever. You are more than your last divorce. You are more than what they said you were. You are more than your job layoff. Do I have a witness in here? But you must persevere because church perseverance uh -huh, it works in your behalf for the Bible says that we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character our hope and church we got to persevere in power do I have a witness in here because perseverance produces character I want you to know that the reason that you're going through what you're going through because God is building your character he's making you stronger wiser and better he's building you up on the inside I don't know who I'm talking to but after you've been through all 
the fire after you come through all the flood after you have survived all of the lies all of the gossip and all of the hell you come through a stronger worshiper a stronger prayer warrior a better person a better worshiper a better lover a better husband a better wife a better friend do I have a witness in here your character becomes stronger yeah what used to make you cry don't make you cry no more what used to break you it can't break you no more what used to tear you down it can't tear you down no more but yeah you're stronger yeah you are wiser yeah you are better it builds your character do I have a witness in here I remember some time ago that when I was a little boy my father he was trying to build character in me it was a long time ago when I was in the fourth grade I had to learn the Gettysburg Address and I was reciting the Gettysburg Address all over the house I was about to drive my family crazy because I knew the Gettysburg Address and don't you know I impressed my father so that on one Sunday morning he called me up in the pulpit and he said Walter he said I want you to come in the pulpit and stand in the chair and tell the church that show the church that you know the Gettysburg address and he put me in a chair and stood me up in the chair right behind the pulpit and he said now show everybody that you know the Gettysburg address well I knew it by heart in the house but when I got in the pulpit and I saw all those people I forgot some of the words and so I said four score and seven years ago our fathers brought forth upon this continent a, a, a new world and don't you know I got just a short ways and I forgot the words and he stood behind me and don't you know he said slow down he said you know it he said take your time and say the words and I said four score and seven years ago our fathers brought forth upon this continent and I got right there and forgot the words and he said son he said I'm not gonna let you stop here slow down and say the Gettysburg address I said daddy I said I'm too scared he said don't be ashamed he said they don't know it but you know it and don't you know after he said those words and he whispered a prayer in my ear don't you know I opened my mouth and that third time I recited every word of the Gettysburg address and when I got through the whole church stood on their feet and they applauded and clapped their hands he took me down and he hugged me he said I'm proud of you when I got home he said son if I had let you stop right there he said you would have been quitting the rest of your life every time you faced a difficult every time you faced an obstacle every time you faced a difficult place you would have been quitting for the rest of your life so I kept you there until you figured it out 
until you worked it out until you got through it you had to stand you had to persevere you had to get through it and I want to tell somebody that that's what perseverance does it builds your character it helps you to stand because church you got to stand when it gets hard you got to stand when you can't make it you got to stand when they talk about you you got to stand when they come against you you got to stand because perseverance it builds your character but church must I preach in the house? But church, yeah, not only does it give you character, but it gives you hope. You will have a witness in here. I'm going home now, but I got hope. Yeah, I got hope. Yeah, because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus, his blood and his righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy lean on Jesus his name on Christ on Christ on Christ the solid rock I stand I stand because he persevered he persevered yeah he persevered when they put a cross on his back and they marched him up Calvary. He persevered when they hung him high. He persevered when they stretched him wide. He persevered when he died. He persevered, yeah, yeah, when he gave up the ghost. He persevered when he died. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad that he died. I got hope to make it. I got hope to live. I got hope to survive. I got hope to stand. I got hope to shout. I got hope to praise. I got hope to jump. I got hope to shout. I got hope to worship. I got hope to love. I got hope. Yeah! 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Persevere. Persevere. Don't give up now. Don't give up now. You have come too far. You have come too far to turn around now. If God did it before, he'll do it again. If God brought you this far, don't you know he'll take you further? One of the greatest testimonies I have this week is that we were all praying around my mother for strength for healing and after we prayed she started singing a song she started singing that old song please be patient with me God is not through with me yet then she said that's what the Lord told me she said God ain't through with me yet she said, the Lord told her directly, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. I want to leave those words with you. Don't you kill yourself. Don't you throw in the towel yet. Don't you go back on the decision you made, the promise you made to God. God is not through with you yet. He has greater for you. Don't you compromise who you are to please somebody else. Don't you, don't you suffer trying to make somebody else happy. God is not through with you yet. You owe yourself to be the best self that you can be. 
God is not through with you yet. Persevere. Sustain. God has great things in store for you. Listen, beloved, if you want to unite with this ministry, we're going to be back in the sanctuary in just a little while. We have plans underway. You'll hear about our time to come back in. But until then, we want you to connect with us virtually. We want you to contact us at that address below. Bishop David Curtis, our virtual online pastor, will be in contact with you. Also, we want you to sow a seed into this ministry. We need your support to help us to sustain. Why don't you contact us? Beloved, thank you for joining us today. God bless you, and we love you. Come on, Derek, and bless us with that. Please, come on here. Be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. With me yet. When God gets through with me. When God. with me God is not through with me yet with me yet come on help me say it when God gets through with me when God gets through with me when God gets through with me, through with me I shall come Hello everyone, I'm Deacon Tony McKinnon here at Union Baptist Church, and it's my special honor to greet you and to tell you thank you for all the hard work you've done in the year of 2020. Your giving was outstanding, and that shows that you care about your community and your church. So on behalf of our bishop and our church family, we want to say thank you. Now going into 2021, we also want you to continue to do the things that you've done. We want you to reach out and we want you to invite people virtually to Union Baptist. During this time of COVID, we know that people are in need. Our church family's in need. And that's why we are so excited about your commitment to the church. So going forward, continue to give, continue to share, continue to invite people to Union Baptist because we love you and we love our community. So thank you. First of all, we want to thank you so much for your generous support so that we can continue to operate in excellence. The following are ways to give tithes and offerings using technology. Use the Push Pay app or go to giving page on the Union Baptist website. Use the Cash app, which is dollar sign UBC 1200 trade. Use the Givelify app. Union Baptist Church, Winston-Salem. For Rise Up Giving, please use the designated cash app. Dollar sign, Union Baptist, Rise Up. If you don't use technology for giving, you may bring your tithes, offering, and Rise Up campaign payments on Sundays from 10 a.m. till noon. Envelopes will be available, or you can mail checks only. No cash, only checks to 1200 North Trade Street, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 27101. 
Download Monday Morning MP3 Mana for an inspirational message. It can be accessed on our website, YouTube, and Facebook. Attend the Zoom Church this week. The daily schedule is listed on the website. To our virtual church, if you need prayer or would like to join the church, please visit the Connect page on our website. We are pleased to introduce MindSight Counseling Services. Please call the church office at 336-724-9305 to schedule an appointment. To those of you celebrating a birthday this week, we pray that you will have a blessed birthday. Day. Remember to protect yourself and stop the spread of COVID-19. Wear a mask, get tested, and stay safe.